the last week has been a really hard week. Um, it's been a lot to process and there's been a lot of different kind of information flying out there and you know I've taken a lot of time to kind of learn up and try and figure out you know what we can do to help people and support people during this time and I guess what we've I've struggled with is um, with even making this video is should I be saying and think you know like we don't have a huge platform we have zero power in any way but um you know seeing everything play out um it just feels like we're at a time where we all need to speak up and we all need to help the people around us that need our help um we're at that just that to me a crossroads where it's no longer enough to say i'm not racist and um, we have to be anti-racist and we have to go out and we have to stand with everybody in solidarity and try and get better rights more justice and support for people of the black community We've all watched the murder of George Floyd um, play out throughout social media. And that was really hard for me to watch. Like, um, I couldn't watch that the first time I saw it with the sound on, um, because I just couldn't process that something like that was happening um, in 2020. And it's just, it was horrible. And the shocking part is, it's just the latest of a series of murders throughout the black community. Breonna Taylor was shot eight times while she slept. Ahmad Arbery was running through a community and because he was black, he must have been a burglar. So that was justification for two white men to hunt him down and shoot him. And again, if the video of his murder hadn't gone viral, those men wouldn't be in custody right now. That is wrong. Like that, how can it take a viral video for people to be prosecuted for murder? Like it just doesn't make any sense and while you kind of don't want to rely on social media for a lot of this stuff because it's so it's such a visceral response from people um you kind of have to go there to get kind of stuff coming out from different people that you know is based on what's happening in real time and one of the tweets that kind of resonated with me a lot was from a white man um, and i forget his name um he said just like george floyd he was once actually arrested for paying for groceries with a suspected fraudulent check unlike george floyd that was a death sentence of george but for him it's a joke he tells at dinner parties because he's got white privilege and that is true white privilege is an uncomfortable topic for a lot of people to have it is very hard to accept and even believe that as a white person, my life is going to be fundamentally easier than someone from the black community. White privilege isn't something that we ever asked for or something that you ever earned, but it's something that exists. No white privilege doesn't mean that you've never gone through hardship, you've never struggled, or that you've never just had a rough go of things. What it means is that you're probably never going to face the level of discrimination or hatred or violence that the black community face on a regular basis. And that's why we have to speak up and we have to stand together and fight for change and social justice. Because what we're talking about here is basic human rights. These are human rights the black community have been fighting for for centuries. And they're called human rights for a reason, because they belong to everybody. While most of the stuff that we're seeing uh, on social media and the news is playing out in the States, it would be incredibly naive to assume that this is a problem that is only happening in the States. Racism is everywhere, social injustice is everywhere, and we have to, as a society, try and end that. Here in Canada, the black community still face issues with carding. Um, the indigenous community still have, are still fighting to get access to clean water, and the missing indigenous women inquiry is a year behind schedule. There are people out fighting for justice and being made to wait or just being ignored. And that's why we all again have to push for change and make sure that the people that are the most vulnerable and need the most help can get it. I don't really have any of the answers or solutions or any idea how you go about fixing such a complex and broken situation 
but there are people far smarter than me that have solutions and have ways of trying to bridge the community and help get change for the people that need it. No one is condoning the violence that you're seeing play out in the States. And when people say black lives matter, it doesn't mean that only black lives matter. This is about trying to get social justice for everybody. Let's not get stuck in the kind of the BS of this is the right way to support, or this is the right way to make a difference. Let's just get everyone trying to support and trying to push the way to get change. So go out, learn about your, learn about your community, learn about the black community, learn about the history, educate yourself, write to your MPs, demand change, post on social media, donate, do whatever you want to do, but just get behind this. Let's go out and make a real difference. Let's get social justice for everybody because black lives matter.